Steve Mignone here at Burnson Auto Wrecking in Burnson, Massachusetts, doing the junkyard crawl with the very first Chevy Monte Carlo, 1970. And it's similar to a Chevelle, but there's some radical different things about it. If you look at the front right here, to right there. It looks kind of long. Well, Chevrolet Styling wanted to have the longest hood in Chevrolet history, and to do it, they stretched the Monte Carlo's wheelbase a full four inches from 112 on the Chevelle to 116 on the Monte Carlo, all of it ahead of the firewall. That allowed the longest hood for classic proportions like an old Duesenberg. Now you gotta remember that John DeLorean had moved from Pontiac to Chevrolet by 1970. And while he was in charge of the, the Pontiac Grand Prix of 69, which was very similar, when he got to Chevrolet, he says, Chevrolet needs a car like that too. Monte Carlo was born. But the weird thing about Monte Carlo is that because the wheelbase is stretched forward, the suspension was stretched forward, but the engine remained in the same spot. The radiator moved forward and as a result, this weird tunnel-like radiator fan shroud is seen on all Monte Carlos from 70 through 72 and in later versions as well. But these first generation cars, again, very strange. And again, the engine is in its stock location close to the firewall like it is on a Chevelle. But again, the front suspension and frame and wheel openings are moved forward four inches purely to give the Monte Carlo a longer hood and a shorter deck lid like a classic Duesenberg vibe from the 1920s and 30s. That's what DeLorean wanted. Another thing too, seen only on 1970 and 71 one Monte Carlos is a hood emblem or a grill emblem right here. Now the grill is still made out of metal, no plastic yet in 70, but look at the, the Knight's crest right there. That says MCM LXX 1970 in Roman numerals. For 1970, it went MCM LXX I. So that right there is how you can tell a 70 from a 71. The Knight's crest has the Roman numerals of the model year. For 72, third and final year for the first gen uh, Monte Carlo, that feature was eliminated. But a little thing you may not have known of, uh, but the engines on these things ran the gamut, no six cylinders. These were all V8 powered, ranging from the 352 barrel, 354 barrel, a 400 two barrel only, a 402 big block four barrel, or the big dog, the 454. Now this one has a two barrel carburetor. It's conceivable it's the 400 two barrel, but I checked the damper down low and it does not have the large scallop in indicative of the externally balanced 400. So this is the base 352 barrel engine with single exhaust, backed up by a turbo 350 automatic. But yes, you could get a three-speed manual on the column, no joke, in a base Monte Carlo or a four-speed on non-454 cars. You could actually get a 450 or 400 or 403 with a four-speed transmission. Now base price on this car was 3,123 bucks, which was $120 less than a full-sized Impala. So these were, uh, actually quite a value. The beauty of these things, again, is this formal roof line here, which was shared with the 69 through 72 Pontiac Grand Prix, same greenhouse, uh, but again, distinctive uh, bumps on the fenders and quarters. And these things look mean in NASCAR trim. I think uh, Donnie Allison, his Coca-Cola Monte Carlo of 1971 was about the meanest Chevrolet NASCAR racer, short of uh, Smokey Yonex 66. Uh, Chevelle, the 13 car. But again, these make fantastic NASCAR racers. They did in the day, but they're also classy and beautiful. Now around the back here, we see the, the trunk lid in the, in the rear window. And again, the rear window is interchangeable, the Grand Prix, same greenhouse. And again, this is uh, the Chevrolet Special A platform, also kind of known as the G body, depending on who you talk to. But inside the trunk, what have we got? Okay, the original medium blue metallic paint still shining on the inside of the trunk. Uh, the rest of the car is probably very jealous of this little spot right here, but inside, yeah, classic trunk rot. Now these are, of course, body on frame cars. And we can see hints of the original 10 bolt rear axle spotting right there. Now, if this was a, uh, a 396 or 402, I should say, or the big block 454, this would have a 12 bolt rear axle, but again, as a 352 barrel, it's got the same 10 bolt rear end you'll find in a Chevelle. Um, coming around to this corner here, uh, again, the Monte Carlo crest here on the, the B pillar, very, very cool, very scripty, very Monte Carlo, which I think was a resort somewhere in uh, Italy, Europe, France, somewhere. I don't know, I don't get out that way often. Again, no posts on these. These are all two-door hardtops, no convertibles, although a convertible was considered and actually prototyped. Uh, again, no four doors, no wagons. The Monte Carlo was strictly a close coupled four passenger, five passenger, uh, luxury type personal car. 
This is kind of cool right here. This is Car Life magazine, February of 1970. And tests include the CUDA 340, Torino GT351, and the Monte Carlo SS454. Let's take a peek and see what they had to say. And here it is right here. With big engine, handling package, and a host of keen options, Chevrolet's new personal car becomes a gentleman's bomb. You got to dig those manufacturer plates, MFG015. So it's definitely a, a Chevrolet press car. And down in the bottom right, we can see there, it's got uh, the rally wheels on it. And behind the front tire, that tiny little horizontal thing, that's the SS454 emblem at the bottom of the fender. And uh, that's, that's the big dog right there. Now the SS454 could not be had with a four speed. There were strictly automatics either on the column or in the console when you got the optional bucket seat. So this one has the standard bench. So this actually is a six passenger car, three in the front, three in the back. Gonna be kind of tight back there, but you could get six in this thing. Column shifted automatic. But again, the three speed manual, yes, on the column was the base tranny even in the Monte Carlo. And again, that's how they get that cheap $3,123 base price. Uh, again, it was more like four grand for a typical loaded Monte Carlo. Now this is kind of a weird car. Uh, it does have, um, you know, the base 350, no air conditioning, which was seen probably in 70% of these things. So it's just kind of a stripper. But one thing we see on the front of this thing are the disc brakes right there, which were standard on Monte Carlo, but on Chevelle, you paid extra. So these, you know, these cars had a fair amount of uh, built-in value. But again, it's all about this extra long fender area right here. The extra four inches of wheelbase that gave this car 116 inch wheelbase, four inches longer than the Chevelle. And get this, the 69 through 72 Grand Prix had another two inches of wheelbase, even more than this thing, which gave them even longer noses. So Pontiac always had to be one step above Chevrolet. But again, the Monte Carlo and Grand Prix from 69 through 72, at least the 70 on Monte Carlo, Grand Prix came along in 69. Keep those letters to yourself. But uh, but those two cars are some of the classiest GM quasi-muscle cars going. It's a sad thing to see this one here in the boneyard. There's not much left of it. But this would make a pretty cool uh, Coca-Cola NASCAR tribute machine in red and gold with uh, Donnie Allison logos on it. I could almost see that happening. But until then, stay tuned and subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. There's plenty more to come from Burnison Auto Wrecking in Burnison, Massachusetts.